Hello, everyone, and welcome to this morning's Vision 6 Power Session, building an e-newsletter from scratch. Uh, my name is Andy, the product trainer here at Vision 6, and I'll be taking you through today's session. So planning an e-newsletter, there's a couple of things that uh, you know may help assist you uh, with regards to the planning and the structure side of things. So what are some of these things we can do beforehand? Well, firstly, it's important to think about what is the actual goal of our newsletter? Do we want people to visit our website, to fill in a form, register for an event, or just be informed about some new products or services that we might have? So have a bit of a think about the goal because that will define success for your newsletter and also help you work out what content to use. It's also important to have a look at how your last newsletter performed, particularly if um, you send these out fairly regularly, maybe once a fortnight, once a week, once a month, that type of thing. Have a look at how the last one performed and just use the data available there to see if it resulted in any unsubscribes. Did people click through and read particular articles? Was there a bit of a theme as to the articles that users did click on and didn't click on? And that way you can get a bit of a better understanding as to what your users like to receive from you content wise. And then of course you can use that to inform your decisions for planning the next one. Now, when it comes to the actual content itself, uh, again, using that reporting data and having a look at how the last one performed can help you ascertain what content you should use for future copies and future versions of your e-newsletter. And also have a look, think about whether you can align the content that you're thinking of using with any current trends. So for example, if your uh, newsletter is about um, uh, fitness or, or cooking for healthy eating, that type of thing, you could then potentially have a look on Google Trends or just have a look at on Instagram, uh, you know, certain uh, hashtag or keywords to see whether there are certain uh, trends, maybe a new way of cooking something or a healthier way of cooking something, air fries, for example, and then align that with what your particular newsletter is talking about. Obviously, as long as it fits with the, your, your type of content. Also then when you're planning a newsletter, have a think about what personalization you can include uh, in the content and in the subject. So rather than just send out a generic blanket e-newsletter to everyone, um, of course, personalization will always make that piece of content perform better than a generic one. So have a, um, an idea as to what you could include there. And I've got some examples as well that we're going to build into our newsletter shortly. Imagery, of course, plays an important part, as you'll see in the newsletter that we'll be designing. I've got sort of five or six key pictures that I've already picked out. Um, and again, that just suits the style of newsletter we're going with, and it suits the content that we're talking uh, to as well. And what is the best day to send? That is a very important thing because, of course, you want to make sure your newsletter performs well, that people read that email, open it, and then, of course, click through to your, uh, your goal. Again, um, circling back to that top point there. So what is the best day to send? Uh, we actually have on the Vision 6 website this email marketing metrics report, which updates uh, every month. You can find it at uh, the URL there on the top left corner. And uh, this you know, gives you all sorts of interesting information as to um, how people are opening emails, what email clients they're using. But of course, one of the best ones to look at is the uh, email sends per day, of course. You can see what day people are sending emails, but also the click-through rate is an important one there um, as well when people are clicking through to emails. And you've got open rates for industries and that type of thing as well. But even here at the top, you can see the day of the highest click-through rate at the moment is Monday. So we may decide to send our newsletter sometime on a Monday. It could even be Monday, yes, scheduling it in for Monday morning. So we're at the top of the person's inbox, for example. So once we had a thought about what we're going to talk about in our newsletter and then looking at data from the previous ones, we then need to pre prepare all of our different bits and pieces that we need. So the actual content and text, uh, the links to any full articles that we have, if you're um, asking people to subscribe to another list, for example, in this particular email we're building, we're going to talk about uh, one of the articles will be about a recipe club. We want people to join that recipe club. So that's a Vision 6 form for that we can use. Of course, if you're running an event as well, you can link to the events form in Vision 6. Uh, the imagery, have that all ready to go and any personalization and conditional content as well. Um, have that all good to go so that you've got uh, you know, everything ready and you know exactly what you're working with then as well. And that can sort of help you determine which article goes first and the order of events uh, within your newsletter. Now, of course, to save time today, I'm sort of time boxed in at about 20 minutes or so. So I have all my pictures already and I have all my content already as well, just in a little text file. So I'll be copy and pasting from that. Uh, it's probably a little bit more exciting for you as well, rather than just watch me type out a whole article as well. So a newsletter in 20 minutes, fairly ambitious. Um, the reason we're doing this particular session is that it was one of our most requested topics uh, from last year. And 
think about it not to say that you need to rush it. 20 minutes is certainly not normal for creating a newsletter. It, this, is, this is very rushed, obviously, within the session. So think of it mainly as the idea of this session is to showcase as many useful functions within a short space of time. So take your time when you're doing your own e-newsletter. It's definitely quality over quantity. So what are we building today? Well, we're going to start with this very simple template that I've got in Vision 6. It's just a header and footer. Uh, and we're going to be building out this finished product here. I've got about 15 minutes left. <laughs> um, and I've also highlighted there this particular article, the first one of the four, is going to be what we call our conditional content article. So we're going to change that block for certain people who receive our email. And in terms of the personalization, this is the list I will be sending to. I'm not actually going to do the send, but this is the list uh, here. You can see we've got the person's email address, their first name and their dietary. So I'm going to be using the first name as a wildcard. So we're going to personalize it with the user's first name for the introduction. And we're going to put the person's first name on a button as well. That can work really well for increasing uh, conversions and click-throughs. And we're going to use our conditional content uh, feature that we have in Vision 6. And uh, note that's only available on some plans, but we're going to be using that for the dietary. So we're actually going to be swapping out our first article uh, if you're gluten-free, the user will see a slightly different version of the article, different picture. If you're not gluten-free, the user will see this one here. And that's done with conditional content. Enough talk, so let's get jumping in straight away into Vision 6 and have a look at our newsletter. So I'm just going to come into the messages section here on the left-hand side and create a brand new message. And normally you'd come in here and choose a template or copy one of your previous ones and go from there. I'm going to use my header and footer email uh, as shown here. Very simple sort of starting point for my template. Now, um, I've actually got printed next to me here. Obviously, you can't see that. I've got a print, print out of what the newsletter did, did look like, so I can try and match it to what I said it would look like. Um, so I'm going to drag in the first part, which is our image component. So I've just grabbed from the right-hand side an image component and popped it in there into our email design. I'm going to double click on that now to change the image from the placeholder to an actual real image. And I've got a few uploaded here into the system. And I've got one already made up for my e-news banner. So I'm going to pop that in there as my header uh, right at the top of the e-newsletter. Then uh, if you remember going back to our little example, we had a bit of an introduction that came across the page. So I'm just going to open up my text file here where I have my pre-written text. Again, just to save time in today's session, I'm going to paste in my text there and I might make this a heading two. Oops, sorry, let's make it heading three. It's a bit large otherwise. There we go. That's looking good. And now what I'm going to start doing is just building out all my uh, four main articles underneath that. So I'm going to grab a text component and duplicate it four times because I will have four articles underneath that. So let's grab the first one, which was the one on the top left, new donuts, grab my text, paste it in, and let's make my heading a heading three. On to the next one. This one is about our recipe club. So I'm going to copy the text, paste it in, and once again, adjust our heading. Our third one's about catering. So I'll copy that one in as well. And we pop it in there. And our last one is just to remind people that we do more than just sweets. We have some savory goods available as well. So just pasting that one in there and once again, adjusting that header size there. And that way we're keeping it all nice and consistent. We're making them all header threes for the headings and just having that all nice uh, and, and organized there. So it all sort of you know looks good. And we've got a standard theme uh, through the newsletter as well now. Excellent, let's add images to them. You might remember that our original picture, we had images uh, on all of these, so except the first one. So as I click on each one over on the right-hand side, I'm going to turn on the image component, which just puts this little picture to the side here. So what I'll do is double click on that one and we'll choose an image to go with it. And I've got a product photo uh, area here, which is where all my images are. But of course you can upload photos from your computer and bring them into this image gallery, of course, as well. So I'll pop in a photo of our donuts and just center that in there. Then I'll go to the recipe club, switch on the image part of that component. And again, choose a nice photo to go with that and we'll center it. Our catering has one as well. Now I'm not, not, uh, not sort of fussed at the moment about making the image um, full screen. I'm going to work on my columns first 
and then I'll go through and adjust the image sizes. I'm just sort of placing it in there now initially, and then uh, I'll come back and set the sizing and everything as required. And the last one is the pretzel image here and center that. Excellent, that is all looking pretty good. Now what I wanted to do is you might remember that in our email, we actually had uh, a grid of four. So it's two rows of two columns. Uh, if you haven't used columns before in Vision 6, it's very easy to do to make columns. You just grab one of your components and then drag it up to the left or right of an existing one. If I were to let go now, it would simply reorder them if I do that. But if I'm dragging off to one of the sides, you'll see the little gray shading in the background goes to a half and half view, which tells me that when I let go, it will turn that into two nice columns for me. So that's all looking good. And I would then repeat the process for these two here. One suggestion I'll make though, um, this is a handy one. If you've ever got, uh, or if you're ever designing something with columns and you've got more than one row, as I will have here. So we're going to have one row of columns followed by a second row of columns. If you've ever got that, I would highly recommend popping a spacer between the two rows. The reason for that is that sometimes if this column here gets a little bit longer, so the text in this column might be longer than the one on the right, it can play with the position of the columns underneath it. Because imagine if this one's quite long, then it's going to push the one underneath down as well. And then they won't line up anymore in this nice grid. So if we pop in a spacer element, between our rows of columns like here. It sort of tells Vision 6 to reset it, ignore anything under this line here. So they've got the two, the two columns reset and then we can do another two columns underneath. So that's what I'm going to do here now. There we go. So we've got a set of columns, a spacer to reset that and another set of columns. We can of course adjust the color of the spacer and bring it right down as well. So I'm just going to make it 20 so that it's not really as visible. It's just that it creates a nice gap between the email uh, sections of our article there. Okay, looking good. Let's now adjust the images. They look a little bit small. I sort of want to make them uh, fit the full sort of uh, area of the column here, as you can see. So let's go back to our email design. And where we've got our image section over here on the right hand side, we just press reset. And what that does is tells the image to go as big as it can in the space we have provided. So it's going to automatically make it fit the, the sort of given area. So that's looking great now. I've got that sort of filling up nicely and the padding around the edges, of course, is still making it, uh, you know, giving it a bit of clear space around the edges there. So it's not right up against the, the darker uh, background color of our email. So that's all looking good. Excellent. Let's now pop in a button at the end of the email. So we'll go and drag in a button here. And this will be our primary call to action for our donut store. So on the actual text itself is, um, we'll put in some wildcarded text. So we'll go order online now. So we could just do something like that, order online now. But I'm going to come back to it in a few moments and actually put the person's first name on the button itself. So I'll come back to that in a few moments. I've just got my button there ready to go. One other thing I can see here is you might remember that I was going to personalize this email by popping in the user's first name in that spot right there. That's just some placeholder text to remind me to do that. So I'm going to delete that out. And now that I've got my flashing cursor here at the end of our introduction, I want to insert the user's first name. So we'll go into this little wildcard drop down here. I'll choose my list. This one's being sent to my customers. So I'm choosing my customers list. And I'm going to pick the first name field. Now we do have a fallback. If you haven't used this little function before, what a fallback does is if the first name field is blank for any of our contacts that are receiving this email, you can display an alternative word or phrase instead. That's what we call a fallback. In this case, I don't actually need one because if the first name was blank, our introduction would actually still read quite nicely, cooked fresh just for you. So I don't need a fallback really, but if it does have a first name in there, it will say cooked fresh just for you, Andy. So that's actually going to read quite well and I don't need the uh, first name. Uh, sorry, I don't need a fallback for that one. But what I'm actually gonna do is copy this because I want to use this exact same first name on our button. So I'm going to highlight that and use the copy, the command C or control C on a computer, on a, on a PC, sorry, and come down to my button and actually pop the same wildcard here at the end of our button. So order online now 
first name. And when this email gets sent, Vision 6 will replace that with the user's first name. I can then, of course, link that through to our online store or whatever. Now, in case someone's got a long name, I will make the button a little bit longer. I might make it uh, 250 wide because if there's a longer name like um, and a Penelope or something, uh, obviously a little bit longer than Andy. So I just want to make sure that the button is still uh, able to fit that name correctly. So I'll make it 250 in the width there. A couple of other things I'll go through quickly. I'm going to add in uh, buttons onto all of these as well. So on our new donuts here, I'm going to add on this call to action. So I'll turn that on. And on this button, this section here, create a link. I can say where this will go when the user clicks on it. I'll just, I'll just make it go to our pretend website there. And let's make this one say buy now. We'll center it, give it some padding and change the color. Same with the recipe club here. I'm going to switch on our call to action button. I'll select a link. Now this one, as you might remember, is I would like the person to subscribe to our recipe club, which is actually a Vision 6 form I already have. It's a subscription form for a different list in Vision 6 to join our recipe club. So I actually want them to go to this form instead of a website or something like that. So what I'm going to do is back in my email design, instead of putting in the website URL here, I'm going to choose web forms and then select the Vision 6 subscribe form for our recipe club. So you can actually link directly to other Vision 6 forms from an email, which is a great little function. So I'm going to pop it in there and let's change the text to join now. Again, I'll center it, give it some nice padding to just sort of space it out in the email and change the color to suit our branding. We can also make the button a little bit uh, uh, slimmer as well there. Uh, if we want to, I might just do the same for this one, bring it down a little bit to 150. I can then repeat the process if I've got extra buttons for these articles here, but I don't at this stage. So that's all looking pretty good. We're nearly done. The only thing I need to do now, as you might remember back on our little example here, I was going to swap out our new donuts article for gluten-free donuts for any of our contacts that have gluten-free marked as a field on the database. So you might remember here, this is a copy of the, or this is a screenshot of my list. And you'll see I've got a couple of contacts here that are marked as gluten-free. So at the end of the day, remember if we're sending an email out to contacts, we want it to be as personalized as possible, but also as engaging as possible. Because if I send out a very generic email, my gluten-free users, for example, just to, I guess, pick an example, they may not um, you know, resonate with this particular article because they might think, oh, you know, they don't have anything for me. But if we then talk about something very specific to that user, then of course we can get a better engagement out of our email because it's very, uh, specific for you know something that they'd be interested in. So how do we do that? How do we swap out this block automatically just for our gluten-free users? It uses a function in Vision 6 called conditional content, which is this sort of panel at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do to that is add a condition. And the condition is, I just first need to choose my list. If dietary is gluten-free, that's my condition, I'll press OK. And now you'll see we have two versions. We've got this sort of standard blue one here, which is default, everyone will see this. But we also have this second one here, the yellow one, which is only shown to those who have gluten-free set in their dietary field on their contact record in Vision 6. So now that I've clicked on that, I can go and swap out the picture and swap out the text. So I'll go back to my alternate version of the text here copy that and paste that in there. I'm just going to set this font back to normal. And there we go. So as I click over here on the right-hand side, you'll see we kind of actually have two versions of that feature article now. And the Vision 6 will automatically send the correct version of this email to the relevant contact. So gluten-free contact will see this. Someone who doesn't have gluten-free set will see this version. But we can go further, we can personalize this button as well. So instead of just buy now, we can change it to say shop gluten-free, oh, sorry, shop. And we can change the link on that button to go to our gluten-free store or the gluten-free section on our online store. So again, 
very relevant uh, email or the email will be very, very relevant to our contacts because not only is the imagery, the text and the button uh, very personalized to our users, it's actually taking them to the right place where they can go and purchase these items of interest. And then the users who don't have gluten-free on their file, they will see different button, different text and different imagery as well. You could potentially even change the button uh, color if you wanted to as well. So you can really personalize uh, the different components within the email. Fantastic, that's looking good. So what we'll do is now save that. I wouldn't recommend calling it test email <laughs> or untitled four, <laughs> as I tend to do. So I'll just save that email in there. And I quickly wanna preview it for you just to show these different areas working because the great thing about Vision 6's preview function is that it actually previews it against your contact. So you can make sure that all of those wildcards are working and the gluten-free and the conditional content things that you've got as well, uh, you can make sure they're working too. So I've just as I've zoomed out my browser a little bit there for you, and you'll see my first contact must be called Tom. Um, I know Tom's gluten-free because it's showing this, and right at the bottom as well, we've got the person's first name on our button too, using the wildcard. So as I now flick to my second contact, let's go to my third one. Uh, this is. Um, Nigel, we've also got Durangit here. So again, we've got the first name is working there and on the button itself. And Ranjit must not be gluten-free because he has a different version of our feature story showing there as well. So again, as I flick through my contacts, we can you know, have a look and see if this is all working before we do our email send. So it's a great little function. Just to give you that sort of peace of mind that all of your wildcards are working correctly or all set up and also that your conditional content is set up correctly. You can add many conditional content blocks in your email, by the way. So you could have this second one could change to something else. Uh, if you're running an event, but it's just in Brisbane, you could have the event showing, or you could have an event article showing, but only for people who are in Brisbane, everyone else sees a different story or article in that place. So you can certainly you know, really customize the types of emails you're sending. And at the end of the day, uh, these are the features available to you in Vision 6. So you know, they're, they're great, to, great to use because it means the comms you're sending out of the platform are highly personalized. They're going to engage and get click-throughs. And at the end of the day, that's what you want out of your emails. You want them all to perform as best as they possibly can.